mercy and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The lesson for meditation this morning is the gospel lesson read a moment ago from Matthew 22. And our sermon theme today is entitled, Repent, the Kingdom of Heaven is at Hand. Dear friends and beloved, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, if you wanted to try to pick out a theme for Jesus' ministry, it might be, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You saw this first way back in Matthew 3, verse 2, where repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, was shown to be the focus of the te preachings of John the Baptist, because he was pointing people of, to the coming Christ. And then once Jesus got on the scene, he started to preach. And as his preaching ministry begins, just before he calls the first of the apostles, Jesus said in Matthew 4, 17, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That phrase set the tone for what Jesus was trying to accomplish in all of his time here on earth. And even in our recent gospel lessons in the last couple of weeks from Matthew 21 and 22, Jesus has been calling sinners to repentance. The elders and the chief priests a couple of weeks ago challenges Jesus' authority. Then Jesus told the parable of the wicked tenants. And then he told the parable of the wedding banquet, all of which were not so subtle attempts to call sinners to repentance. Which brings us to the passage today. You know, it's been said that politics can make for very strange bedfellows sometimes. And that's what was going on in verses 15 and 16. When Jesus is approached by both the Pharisees and the Herodians. Now these two groups of people were staunch, hardcore political en enemies who couldn't stand each other. The Pharisees were avid Jewish nationalists, and they strongly resented the presence of the Romans in their land. But the Herodians, as you might be able to guess, were people who were loyal to King Herod and to the Romans. So these two groups of people were not friendly with each other, to say the least. But in spite of their very strong differences, they had one thing in common. They both intensely liked Jesus to the extent that they wanted him eliminated and out of the way. So they decided to join forces and attempt to try and get Jesus. Now you heard first they tried to butter him up with a bunch of false flattery that Jesus saw right through. And then they asked him a really loaded question in verse 17. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? The question was a trap. Because if Jesus said, yes, you should pay the taxes, then the Pharisees would have had a field day telling everybody that Jesus was pro-Roman and that would have started to create doubts in the minds of a lot of people whether or not he was the Messiah because the Messiah supposedly was to set him free from the Romans. And that could have turned a lot of people against Jesus. But if Jesus said, no, don't pay the taxes, well, now the Herodians would have had grounds to have the Romans put Jesus to death for treason against the emperor. There was simply no way out for Jesus. Or so they thought. They really thought they had him this time. But they were wrong. Jesus responded by asking for a coin, pointing out Caesar's likeness on the coin, and then he said in verse 21, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. In verse 22 said, When they heard that, they were marveled, they had nothing to say in response, and they just walked away. With good reason, because that response by Jesus is remarkable on a lot of levels. First, he got out of their trap. He answered a seemingly yes or no question in a way that foiled their little plan. But more importantly, 
This was yet another attempt by Jesus to call sinners to repentance. What did he mean by render to God the things that are of God? Well, we know the kingdom of God is not of this world. That's why God doesn't have any interest in earthly treasures. And the truth is our money and our earthly treasures are already his to begin with in the first place. God is not interested in getting financially rich off of us. He's interested in saving people from their sin. The Pharisees were sinners. The Herodians were sinners. And you and I by nature are sinners also. This is why he is calling a sinful dying world to repentance. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But this is the joy of the kingdom of heaven that is at hand because the kingdom of heaven is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he is at hand. It all comes back to Jesus because life comes through, through Jesus and Jesus alone. This sin that mankind is dealing with, that's a struggle we never would have won on our own. In fact, the entire Old Testament shows what happens when mankind tries to please God in his own strength. It fails every single time. We see it in the Old Testament Israelites, and we see it in us today. We simply can't do it alone. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came so that we would not have to please God on our own, because he pleased God for us. Jesus defeated sin and Satan because we were no match for those things. Jesus came and he lived a sinless life on our behalf and then he willingly went to the cross to pay for our sinfulness even though he was innocent and had no price to pay. That is how Jesus set us free from death. We are no longer slaves to sin because Jesus took sin head on and he defeated it once and for all. That's the blessing for us today. Our sins are not held against us. We're not going to be denied access to heaven because of our sin. Why? Because we have been baptized into Christ and we now proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God and He is our Lord and our Savior. Jesus is perfectly righteous. We confess that our sins are forgiven by God for His sake alone. That is the truth that our sinful nature would reject, but we are enabled to know that Jesus is Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to be righteous on our own in order to be saved. We just have to believe that our imperfections of sin are forgiven in Christ, and we are enabled to believe that through the free gift of the Holy Spirit received in baptism. The gift of the Holy Spirit brought quite a change in our minds. Now we don't cling to our sinful ways and reject God, but through the Spirit we see and reject our sinfulness and call upon Jesus for our forgiveness. And this change of mind about our sinfulness is called repentance. Our Holy Spirit-driven repentance is our evidence of our redemption in Christ. Because it is by the power of the Holy Spirit we have answered Jesus' call to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what Jesus was talking about today when he said, render to God the things that are of God. We render to God the things that are of God when we proclaim Jesus as Lord. We do that when we are in his word and in his sacraments. We do this when we confess our sinful ways and we turn to him for mercy, knowing we've already received mercy in Jesus. So Jesus was saying that in this life, we Christians live in two kingdoms. We are to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and we do that 
<clears throat> by respecting godly earthly authorities, paying our taxes, being law-abiding citizens. But we are also called to render to God the things that are of God, which means we are to repent of our sins, see Jesus as Lord and Savior by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are to nourish and strengthen our faith in Christ through word and sacrament. We're to live a life of love and service to our fellow man, thereby showing the love of Jesus to the world. And we are always to look for and take opportunities to tell others about Jesus' love for them. So the sole focus of Jesus' ministry is winning souls for the kingdom of heaven through repentance and faith in him. So as God's own child, we gladly hear Jesus' battle cry. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we know that the blessings of repentance and faith in life that he gives us are everlasting, eternally, never-ending, and joyous beyond all words. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his second coming. Amen. We continue with our prayer hymn number 940, Holy God, we praise thy name. Please rise.